Hi, Stizor. I just, um, this is sort of like the denouement, uh, the part after the climax in the, um, in the play that brings it back down to reality. Um, I was curious, as I generally am not only in what the alleged truth is, our current understanding, but where the error comes from. Um, so we figured that out about some of the other things, and, and now we have this. I, I thought it would be good to enter into a little bit of mathematics. And, uh, and I knew there's some error saying that fractals come from pi, and I, and I still don't get why you say, and that, see, that's why they're called fractals, because the word pi doesn't really seem to have any kind of relationship to the word fractal. But I see, I see the error, and um, you know it's kind of interesting because yeah, the Mandelbrot set does have a um, a relationship to pi, a very interesting one, because of course pi is not in the definition of um, the Mandelbrot set, and, um, and the Mandelbrot set is a, is a set of points. It's the um, the uh, outline, which is um, is a fractal, but yeah, it has a uh, an interesting uh, relationship to pi. So the mistake is just merely that there are other kinds of fractals besides the Mandelbrot set. Um, it's not true that they're not called fractals, they're called the Mandelbrot set. Um, like um, the Koch snowflake, for example. You know, I don't, I don't see any relationship to pi there. If you could drive one, wow, that'd be interesting. But the Mandelbrot set does have a surprising relationship and um, you know an interesting history about how that was discovered you know and how persons started to notice that um, there's a, a calculation that you can do near near that you have the Mandelbrot set the body the big cardioid body and then that circular head and I guess they were interested in on how narrow that juncture is is it infinitely narrow and you get the number pi out of it, the calculation there, the recursive calculation, and uh, and I guess that turned out to be a really efficient way to calculate pi. So that's interesting. But the Mandelbrot set is just one one um, one way to get a fractal. It's a very interesting way. Mandelbrot, always a big hero of mine. So, thanks for the video, and um, and really, you know, I still applaud your uh, your uh, what do I call it? Not interest, but your um, you know, praise for math and physics. And um, you know, I met a lot of people with kind of crazy ideas about math and physics, and uh, I've always enjoyed talking to them, making their head. It's it's interesting to me. Um, I think you know you seem like you're you're basically smart enough to learn a lot about math and physics, um, but you'd have to you'd have to be interested in the study of your own mistakes. That that's what's holding me back there. But hey, I'm not going to say anything bad about the Mandelbrot set. It's awesome. Nor am I going to say anything bad about uh, having a wondrous attitude <laughs> uh, about the appearance of pi. And some of the calculations of the Mandelbrot set. It's um, it's a good example of, of uh, you know the sort of a Wolfram-esque uh, fascination with uh, with the complexities that come from uh, seemingly simple uh, mathematical equations when uh, coupled with a recursive application of them. And um, you might want to look at that too. Um, but even you can't say, because I would love to say that fractals all have to do with recursion. But um, and that's almost true, but uh, but not quite that you could claim it. But definitely, there's something interesting about recursion that's expressed in uh, in fractals. So um, anyway, thanks for making that explanation, because now I understand where you you get that statement. Not literally true, but a lot 
closer to being true um, in so far as uh, uh, well, I don't know it's not that the Mandelbrot set comes from Pi, it's more like that Pi comes out of the Mandelbrot set in an interesting uh, in a surprising way alright I suppose that's enough so um yeah. <laughs> Cheers. I don't know, was that was that gentle enough?